my father was in the military, so I'm a product of military travel, of what we call a military brat. I was born in Anchorage, Alaska, and throughout my formative years moved around the country, learned different cultures, became very adaptable uh, to new environments, and also during that time learned that one of the things that I did like to do was to help people. I became interested in science and engineering more at the past the high school level and was looking for an opportunity to apply science and thought that engineering would give me that opportunity. And in particular, I was interested in applications that would improve human health. So what better field than biomedical engineering? At the time when I got started, biomedical engineering as a field and as a discipline wasn't as well developed. So I did my graduate work in chemical engineering and applied chemical engineering principles to problems in medicine, in particular sickle cell disease. So I was able to use basic fluid mechanical principles of flow towards understanding abnormal blood flow in a disease that primarily affected African Americans. It is absolutely true that in order to be a successful engineer, you need to have strong science and math skills because you need those fundamentals as you are applying engineering principles to solve complex problems. And one of the ways engineers address complex problems is to first break them down into parts and then put those parts back together and come up with the solutions that are relevant. When I completed my graduate studies in chemical engineering, at the time, I was not quite sure if I wanted an academic career path or a career path in industry. Where my heart really lied was in working with students in an academic environment and pursuing intellectual pursuits and research that were more under my own control as far as pursuing research directions I was most interested in. I've been interested in the mechanics of cells and cell behavior and then how the cells come together if you're cultivating cells to make tissues and then how those tissues behave under the influence of forces like fluid mechanical forces or forces within the body. And in that realm, I've studied sickle cell disease where we looked at the abnormal mechanics of red blood cells and the mechanics of blood flow in the context of sickle cell disease. We've also used mechanics in a way that we looked at the mechanics of cells, in this case chondrocytes, as we were cultivating chondrocytes in a bioreactor, so in conditions outside of the body, to mimic what's going on in the body so that we can cultivate and develop cartilage tissues. And these cartilage tissues would then be used as substitute tissues for repair for damaged cartilage. But an underlying theme has been the mechanics and the role of mechanics and mechanical forces on cells and their behavior and then how those cells develop into tissues in mechanical or fluid mechanical environments. We're always looking for new approaches and I find one of the best ways to come up with a new approach is to take the, the ideas in one area and apply them in a different area. So we, we are an interdisciplinary field by nature but the most significant advances that we're seeing are coming at the intersection of different disciplines within our discipline. So you maybe t have a biological concept that you then apply an engineering uh, concept to. That's where you're actually making the, the, the real discovery. Another area where we really see creativity is just bringing new students in fresh ideas, bringing fresh eyes to an old problem makes a very big difference. Bringing new tools and new technologies to an old problem makes a big difference. And one of the most exciting things for engineers is to be the one who's deriving, developing, or building the new tools that are used in a new way. Or actually taking an idea and using it in a, for a different application. Working with others who don't necessarily share your background but have complementary backgrounds. That's really where we're seeing the push on innovation and the new discoveries. I was interested in a career path where I could help people and I wasn't sure as a young person what 
path that would be or what form that career path would take. And the reason why I like biomedical engineering in particular is because it is a pathway to help people. Our tagline is that we improve health and well-being. And it's, it's real. It's a legitimate tagline because the things that we work on really do have the potential to improve and enhance the quality of life. But one of the things that I've found that's most important that it really does allow you to connect with people. If part of our goal is to make a difference and improve the quality of life, it's, it's very rewarding actually to learn about a particular clinical application, learn about that disease, and then actually meet and work with people who are the frontline clinicians who are treating those patients and meet the patients themselves. You, you have more of a sense of purpose when you see the people who are impacted and how their lives are impacted by the work that you're doing. For biomedical engineering, it is the fastest growing field. I talk to students and I ask them, why did you select biomedical engineering? And the answer that's given the most often is that they want to make a difference in the world. As a graduate student, I was looking for a research project that not only would allow me to do research that would have the potential to impact human well-being, something that was relevant to a medical problem, I was also looking for an opportunity to get back to my community. I looked at sickle cell disease in particular because it predominantly affects African Americans. And I felt that if I was using my engineering expertise towards a medical problem that specifically or, or disproportionately impacted the African American community, that had special meaning uh, for me as a career path. And biomedical engineering allowed me to pursue that path.